Hey folks, my name is Kevin and it's time for some pretty freaking exciting knife nerdery because this box contains two knives sent to me directly by Brian Brown. I'm assuming you probably know who that is already. And that's a first for me in this channel. I've never had a knife designer and knife maker send me a knife directly to check out before. That is huge. I think the closest thing is probably Jake sending me his Avant prototype, but that's a fairly different situation because he knew me as a friend beforehand. So huge, huge, huge thank you to Brian for sending these my way to check out. Now, I had originally contacted Brian to see if I could check out his new uh, Dutchman prototype. I thought the odds were slim, but who knows. Uh, it's a collaboration he did with Two Your Knives, and it's a tiny little cleaver. And so I thought it might be a fun comparison against this Berg Mini Slim that I had recently picked up, another micro cleaver. Um, he said he couldn't make that work, but he offered to instead send me these. And that's a pretty freaking big upgrade. The rest of those Dutchmen are actually heading to Urban EDC Supply Company. And I actually do have have an affiliate link over there. So maybe, just maybe, I could finagle a way to get my hands on one of those, but I'm guessing probably not. I'm still a very tiny channel. Um, we'll see, and I'm guessing the answer is no. But in the meantime, let is, let's just see what the heck is in here, because oh my god, I already know what's in here, and I mean, if you've seen the thumbnail, so do you, and oh my god, it's so freaking cool. Okay, let's try to open this in a way that doesn't destroy it, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to reuse this box to ship it back. Okay. <laughs> he sent me an envelope to put it back in, and he even said he's going to send me a return shipping label. That's it's crazy. Thank you so much for the generosity. <laughs> I'm going to sneak peek and see which one's which so I can... Uh... Okay, let's... Um, I think this one's the one I think it is. Yeah, let's start with this one. So... What we have in here is a Jaeger M. My understanding is that the M refers to the like the sizing because his custom knives, Jaegers, he makes a small, like a regular sized, kind of medium sized, and a large size, and the production version is based on that medium size. And so what's in here is a Jaeger M that has then had a bunch of cool work done to it. So Oh, 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 wow. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Holy crap. So, um, <laughs> I got in on the pre-order. These things went out very, very quickly. I got in on the pre-order for the most recent production batch of these. I think that is the batch number three, and so my assumption is that this is from batch number two. Batch number one was originally done by We, is my understanding, and batch two and three were both done by Rayot. And, um, yeah. This particular one has had a bunch of finishing work done to it by Fanatic Edge. And my understanding is that Fanatic Edge uh, started as kind of like a anodization sharpening spa service website by a guy named Andrew. And as it evolved over time and he picked up new tools to do things like this really cool milling work and laser engraving and whatnot, it kind of turned into a full-fledged knife shop. And he started doing collaborations with makers like Brian, where he would get a small batch of knives uh, sent to him, and then he would do all this amazing custom Anno work and sell them directly on his website. Um, oh my gosh, that looks so freaking cool. Okay. Uh, the one that I got in on the on the drop uh, for the pre-order is the non-flipper. I did that very deliberately, and we'll talk about that in a moment when I open this up, but I'm really glad that I got to check out one of these flipper ones to see what I'm missing. Let's uh, let's do this. This is not normally how I would think to open this. I, I would treat this as a whole opening knife, um, but because I'm never going to get to do this on my own... <laughs> yeah, okay, now that does work really well. Wait, how does this close? Yeah, so it's one of those kind of knives. <laughs> okay, but how, no, the way I would open mine when, I, when it eventually comes to me, by the way, those are set to come in sometime, I think uh, April or May, he said. And so I'm really glad I get to check this out now. 
Oh, okay, so that's one of the things that I was really excited to experience. This thing has a wicked sharp hollow grind, and that means that it's going to have that kind of delightful ting at the end when it when it opens. And I they, I don't know how much that picked up on camera, but I definitely heard it. Ooh. Oh, let's see, let's see. Oh, I love that. Oh, okay. So I mentioned that I had just gotten this. Um, I've kind of gotten interested lately in um, more kind of chunkier, blockier, angular looking knives. And But the thing is, is I've always really loved sheep's foot, worn cliffs, and reverse tantos, anything that has the blade at the bottom. And so when I see this, this is, I think, it's leaning in that direction of kind of more angular knives, but this is such a well-balanced version. I think this is just like one of the most well-designed um, reverse tanto -y kind of knives that, that kind of really makes that kind of almost brutalist architecture styling look elegant. And um, it's one of the same. So that kind of fascination with these things is why I just picked up this ridiculous over the top um, and delightful uh, EMP EDC thick boy. <laughs> that same kind of just like straight angular lines is very fun for me right now. But compared to this, which is obviously like a character of this style, this is like the perfect implementation of it. It has this swedge along the top, which makes that, I mean, it, it is extending below the grind line, so that is going to thin it out, but just ever so slightly. The real thing here is that this knife thins out because of that hollow grind. Oh my God, that looks so thin. Okay, I was wondering how heavy this would feel in hand because it's a slightly bigger knife than I tend to get. This is a three and a half inch blade and my sweet spot tends to be like three and a quarter, three to three and a quarter. Um, but one of the reasons why larger blade knives feel a little bit unwieldy in my hands is because of the extra weight. And I'm really pleased to see that this this feels lighter than I was anticipating. My understanding, yeah, look at that. There is very heavy internal milling in there. Oh, I love this anno job. Anyway, there's very heavy internal milling in there. And so this is extremely like a good weight. It's not that kind of lightweight that makes you, um, here, I just pull this out of my pocket. I just picked this up recently. This is one of my favorite new knives. This is the Richard Rogers OEM Slim Utility. And this thing is so lightweight that it starts feeling feathery. Like it's, um, it, it's, it's not like flimsy. It doesn't feel like it's flexing, but it's so lightweight that when you hold it, it feels almost hollow. And this is that really nice balance where this is just, um, yeah, this is a like a weight that feels very light but not that into that hollow territory. It still feels kind of sturdy and solid. The big reason why I got the non-flipper version is because, well, first things first, I am a type of person that if I can middle finger flick a knife, oh, that's so good. If I'm gonna middle, if I can middle finger flick a knife, I'm going to do that nearly 100% of the time. And so I, I'm, I don't, I'm not gonna miss having this flipper tab, even though that works really, really nicely. And I do normally like multiple deployment methods, but what I really wanted is when you remove this flipper tab, I wanted the ability to choke up because um, this is really, really comfortable. My fingers fit here in this spot and my other fingers fit right there. And this does feel really, really nice, but I like having the option of getting up just a little bit further and putting my thumb a little bit further up if I really wanna push through something. Um, and this honestly, if you get the version that has this flipper tab, this honestly doesn't feel terrible, but you do have this flipper tab in the way. The fact that it is this style of flipper tab, which is very um, low down and flat here, means that as flipper tabs that you might have to put your finger over goes, this makes it even possible in the first place. Yet 
yet, and yet still reasonably comfortable. A lot of knives that have a flipper tab, you just wouldn't be able to do this. And so this style makes it possible. So if you got that kind, I think you'll be, you know, okay, but this will certainly be so much more comfortable if you don't have that here. That's something I'm noticing right off the bat that this flipper tab design is not um, what I would expect in terms of a flipper tab. Most flipper tabs lean forward, not back. But the, the jimping on this is the perfect kind of jimping. That's not deep, but it is crisp. And that means that you get traction. So this is actually a really cool, I like this flipper tab a lot. So I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not regretting my choice because for the type of usage and handling that I actually will do on a regular basis, it's the right decision for me. But uh, I think if I had gotten the version with the flipper tab, I wouldn't have um, been disappointed with that. This is such a, a, a good flipper tab action that honestly, it makes me feel like maybe I would want to pick up another one that has that. Um, wow, that action is just so nice. Check this out. This thing has this really cool crowned backspacer. That's a really neat of, like effect you don't see very often. Um, and it's interesting to me that they did that given that they don't have a crown spine. That crown, that the lack of a crown spine, the flat spine, um, makes a lot of sense with the angularity of the knife, but it does also seem like it would be kind of intuitive to have this crowned line run the entire length. But you can see, man, there's nice chamfering happening all the way. So even though this is not crowned, it just feels yeah, that is good. Man, I'm really, really pleased with this so far. Um, something that I expect to not love is the lack of deep carry on this clip. Um, but it feels like it's got good spring tension, it's got good clearance, and aesthetically, I do think it works really nicely. One thing that's interesting about it is that it's not perfectly angular. This is such an angular knife that to see these subtle swoops is a little bit surprising, except this kind of swoop here actually mirrors this swoop really nicely. You can see how it comes down below like that, and that follows this line, especially when you have the flipper tab here, that follows this line down. So aesthetically, it actually does work really nice. This kind of line mirrors that kind of line. Yeah, wow. So then, wow, look at the, the bright, bright gold inside there. That's so pretty. And on the outside, it's this much more muted kind of bronze quality. Look at that pivot ring. I gotta say, so I'm not normally someone that's into anno on knives, like just in general, it's not my thing. I prefer almost every, okay, almost every knife I own is something that I want to carry and use. And I always prefer that the knives I carry and use feel to me emotionally like I'm not afraid to use it. And I know how stupid that is, but I'm always afraid I'm going to scratch something like this. And so I don't normally go for knives that look um, this kind of amount of stylization, but wow, I love this. I love this combination. This kind of, I don't know how well it's going to come through, but actually uh, it looks like on my camera it's coming through pretty accurately. This is a like a kind of a bluish green and it's got this subtle kind of striping going on that I don't know if that's intentional or not, or if that's just from oils in my hand. Um, and then that pairs so nicely with this really kind of golden color going on right there. Yeah, I gotta say, I am, I was a little bit nervous getting this knife. Not this particular one loan in. I was really kind of nervous getting it in the pre-order just because it is bigger than I normally go for, go for. But once I have this in hand, I'm so, so, so freaking glad I got this pre-order because this, yeah, I've spent some time with slightly larger knives recently and kind of gotten a little bit more used to it, but the way that this feels in hand and the, like the weight and the distribution of the weight, where's the balance point? <sighs> yeah, that's freaking perfect. Uh, this doesn't feel like a big knife. And I know a lot of you are going to say 3.5 inches isn't a big knife, but it doesn't, but it is to me. <laughs> and with this hollow grind, God, that's, that's just really freaking cool looking. I love that. I love that look of the hollow grind and the swedge. I have it on a couple other knives. It's just, it just looks gorgeous. Yeah. With this hollow knife, I anticipate this is going to be just a fantastic user. I am, um, 
I asked Brian what his uh, rules were for for use, like for carrying it, for for um, you know test cutting, for disassembly, anything like that. And to add to just the absurd level of generosity that he's offering up here, he um, he told me his only feedback on that was to use it like it's mine. <laughs> and the good news for him is that I take exceptionally good care of my knives, and so he'll get that same treatment on this. But that's just such a, a cool thing for him to have said. So I don't know. So I don't really anticipate that there is much going on inside this that I would need to take it apart to look at, but um, I, I probably, I don't know, I'll think hard about whether or not I want to take this apart. You can see there's the stop pin, like it's a reasonably normal construction, there's not a lot of wild stuff going on. Um, with the one exception that you see that there, that goes in really deep right there. So it's not too uncommon on knives for this part to go above the stop pin, but it is a little bit. It's kind of uncommon to have the stop pin low down like this and have it covered up. And it's, I guess, a little bit uncommon for it to be covered up that much. I wonder why he did that. But again, I don't know if I'll open this up or not. He said I can. We'll see. I, if I do, I'll be exceptionally careful not to scratch any of this extremely gorgeous hardware. And again, this hardware was this. All of this anode work is done by Fanatic Edge. I something I've been noticing this entire time that I've been closing this. I haven't said it out loud yet, but this is delightfully smooth. I can tell that he has the pivot on this cranked down a little bit tight. Like this is a very controlled finish for a knife on bearings. Um, and so I might uh, tune this to see what I get from that. But with it cranked down that tight, you can really feel any kind of vibration in a knife, any kind of grit, any kind of um, roughness in how the bearings are rolling. And this is, this is delightful. Yeah, so my my gut reaction to this is holy crap, I cannot believe this is as this is everything I hoped it would be. Man, it's so easy to open this up. Okay, uh, I'm spending almost 20 minutes on this already. I need to move on to the next knife because we have another knife. <laughs> so this next knife is a knife that I didn't get in on the pre-order. I did that uh, deliberately because I I just stylistically didn't think it was going to be for me. Uh, but everyone I know that got one said they really liked it. And the more that I've been looking at this, I kind of regretted not getting one. And so, man, am I excited to get to check this out. This is the Brian Brown Knives Raptor. And this is a thumb stud knife. Oh, oh, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so that's a reasonably firm detent. Ooh, yeah, that's firm. So I had my finger on that. Let's see how much that matters. No, okay. If you, I, I just wasn't giving it enough of like gumption at the beginning. Oh, that's nice. Okay, okay, wow. So there's a couple of reasons why I didn't initially pick this up. The biggest, number one biggest reason is that this um, thing that's going on here gives it the appearance of like an almost Bowie-esque clip point blade. And that's just never been a style that has appealed to me. I know a lot of people absolutely love that. It's just never been my thing. But what I'm super curious is how this feels in like a pinch grip kind of thing, because that's, uh, so yeah. Okay. okay. We'll get there in a moment. The other reason why I didn't initially pick it up is because I didn't know how thin this was, if that would feel good in hand. Like just comparison, you can see that that is a lot thinner right there. And so, yeah, those are the big things that I want to see is how does this blade feel? Um, how does the handle feel? How's the balance and everything? And what does it, what does it feel like to have? Huh. Okay. <laughs> so right off the bat, this grip actually feels fantastic. Sometimes thin knives like this don't feel nice because it feels like it might twist in your hand. But the fact that it spins back out at the end down here, it thickens back out, means that it doesn't feel like it's going to twist. I feel, even though it's just my pinky and, and ring finger, I feel like I've got plenty of control in the knife in that way. And my fingers really melt into this space here. That feels really, really nice. I have medium-sized glove hands, and um, that 
this, like I'm fitting all four fingers into this space. I think if you had larger hands, you would definitely get your pinky up onto that flat. And if I kind of emulate that, that feels really, really nice too. This is one of those ones that doesn't have a, any kind of um, flipper. And so you can see on this, generally speaking, what it would be like to choke up on, on the the Jaeger. And because it's, it'll just be kind of flush here. I'm not sure if it's flush or not. It might, it might set in, but they do make it flush here. And that's very nicely done. You can also see the little micro chamfer right there. So if you do choke up, Okay, so if you're back here, you're on this little mini thumb ramp with the jimping right there. And that feels extremely locked in. If you move up, you can use this spot. And I was hoping that would be the case. And yeah, that actually feels really good in my hand. You can see if I'm that far choked up with my size hands, I've got plenty sticking out the back, but it doesn't feel like a, an absurd amount sticking out the back. If I had this in my hand and I was using this way, I wouldn't feel like this knife was too crazy big for me. This is another three and a half inch blade, I believe. And so this is another thing. Like I didn't know of these. What I'm learning is that Brian has designed three and a half inch knives that are ergonomic enough that they work for even my hands. And <laughs> that's freaking cool. Um, this is another extremely skeletonized knife. Yeah, can you see in there? Wow, it is very, very milled out. Um, and so the weight on this is really, really good again. It's that nice balance. And let me see where the balance point is. Again, that's like freaking perfect. Where you want balance on a knife to be is right where your index finger to be is. And then you want that weight distribution in the handle to be relatively even. And what that gives you, the same thing with the blade. You want the weight distribution in the blade and the handle to be relatively even. What that gives you is this sense of like a really nimble knife. It's where if it's too, if it's too, uh, uh, top heavy, then you'll feel like you're swinging the blade around. If it's too bottom heavy, you won't feel the position of the blade as you move it. The momentum will get lost by the momentum in the handle. And this is one of those ones that is just like exceptionally well balanced. Um, this backspacer this time is flat, but you can see it sticks up just a little. That's a stylistic choice. Like that's a very, like it's never meant to be flush. These little lines right here mirror the jimping lines. And I think Yep, they're cut, I think, identically, so they definitely mirror it. That means that you have a little bit of jimping right there, too. And since this curves down, I suspect... Yeah! Hey, look at that! Yep. So if I use this spot that's not jimped, that slides. If I use that jim spot, it doesn't. And so if you have it in this pinch grip where you put your finger right there, look at that, look at that. That actually feels really, really nice. I love the way that this is a kind of a dimpled... Uh, pivot and this collar here gives you this little spot to press your thumb and when you're holding it like this it just is like a really nice pleasant landing zone spot this is also a hollow grind let's see if i can get that to focus probably not one thing that i noticed right off the bat though is that the hollow grind itself is shorter and so that will impact cutting. Uh, when, when you have a hollow grind that's shorter, it means that it can't dissipate that ramp back up to full speed or full blade thickness at, over a, as long of a period of time. So it's, it's going to be really thin behind the edge. It, it definitely feels like it's not as thin behind the edge, but it'll be really thin behind the edge. And then it will come up to full speed a little bit thicker or I mean, a little bit sooner, whereas this is going to stay thin for an incredibly long period of time. Is this like slightly recurved down? I don't know if my eyes are playing tricks on me. It feels like this is ever so slightly down. Um, I actually really, really like this. Stylistically, it's still just not my knife. And I get that. It's I, I Everyone that I know that owns one of these bought these because stylistically, it's very much their knife. Um, and that's great. <laughs> More power to them. I say functionally, though, this, this is actually really like impressive to me, the way this is feeling, the way this is hitting, the way all of these little bits are adding up to making something that feels like really well thought out. Um, this clip is the same kind of thing where it's like um, starting small and getting larger. But one thing you'll see right off the bat is that it is is turned, like it's... Um, angled. And so partly that's going to be a stylistic choice. Like this is 
straight ahead, and this is straight ahead, and this is angled up, and this is angled up, but that's also gonna mean it's gonna sit better in your pocket. Uh, when you have a pocket clip that is canted to the side like this, it means that the entire thing is more inclined to lean back like this, because it's gonna hang down like that in your pocket. And so that's gonna push it off into that side of your pocket the way you kind of want. And it does, um, it, it, it does mean also that like the the knife, especially because of the way that this curves, if it does hang like this in your pocket, it's gonna be even further out of the way. But because this isn't a flipper tab knife and you, you, know, you have nothing like in your way here, there's nothing to be scratch at you or Nick Shabazz calls it a pocket pecker. There's none of that going on. But like I said, over here on this, this is such a, um, a minimal flipper tab. And the way that this is angled like this means that you, again, as you come your finger over this, there's no, as you come in your pocket, sorry, as you, you reach your hand into your pocket and your finger comes over this, it's not gonna scratch it at all. And so again, really impressed with that design. Um, let me think, this is, you know, a, a very long video. Oh, I didn't try the, yeah, that, well, duh, I needed to do that. <laughs> Um, that one feels less tight when I just kind of operate it. And I can also see that it's falling closed a little bit better. Um, so I don't know if this one is just tuned a little bit more the way I normally would. I don't know if I will try to take this apart. The one thing that, um, I know is quote unquote wrong with this knife right off the bat is that this is unfortunately an untooled free spinning pivot. That's something that even Brian learned the hard way. It was a surprise to him. He didn't think that that was the case. And when these made it out to people, people tried to take them apart and started sending them messages. And what, what we're getting at here is that um, normally if you have a free spinning pivot, meaning that both sides can turn, there's nothing geometrically about it that makes it captive, then normally you would have it tooled on both sides. And that sucks, but it means that you can take a little screwdriver like this and hold it in there and anchor the one side while you then take your regular screwdriver and turn the other side. And on this one, you can't do that. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna bother uh, taking this apart, but if I were, the way that you would normally do that is um, usually you'd like apply some pressure like this against the blade or push it down against a surface. And what you're doing basically is torquing the blade against the pivot. And that pressure is what makes, uh, it will grip the pivot and prevent it from spinning in place. And that's exactly the same reason why you need good alignment and centering when you have a knife action in general. And that's why, because if the knife, if the blade is, is you know, pushed either way to the side, that adds friction. Anyway, um, you can do it that way. I, I've also heard people use just like um, tape on, the, on their hand uh, or like a rubber band wrapped around their finger and press on something that gives you grip against this and just push really hard. It's gonna entirely depend on just how put in this is like, is it, how, is it cranked down really hard? Did they put any kind of Loctite in? Um, I do really like the blue accents on this. Not everyone is a blue accents person, but I like blue on knives. And so I think that's a nice little tie-in and it's a nice little pop of color. Um, the other thing that I noticed that both of these have that I wanted to mention right off the bat is just this. Um, you'll see, <laughs> I love the sound that makes. So these knives have completely sterile blades. And uh, yeah, I love that. The only maker's mark on these is right there in the lock bar relief. And that's just such a classy way of doing that. I love that. Thank you so much for doing that. Is the blade steel demarcated anywhere? I don't actually know. I don't see it anywhere. I think these are both M390. I don't know about that. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> ah, the sounds on this knife are really good. Yeah. Oh. All across the board, this is a much, much more me knife. In every single way, this is a more me knife. Uh, but. I'm so glad I got to check this out. I wasn't gonna buy one of these, like I said, and um, I still think that stylistically it's not for me, but I'm really excited to actually hold it and experience it. And I'm gonna try cutting with it and it's going to be uh, 
really freaking cool. Anyway, so this is a half hour unboxing video with so much detail. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, <laughs> and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you guys next time. And again, Brian, thank you so much for sending these my way.